My Minn Kota 4-Trex electric motor is uh, solidly mounted uh, just using the components that come with the motor. I've got a, a Velcro type hold down strap uh, on the other end where the, the big motor is. It locks that end down, keeps it from bouncing around. And there's a post right here on the side of the mount that hits your deck and prevents it from bouncing up and down here. So it's a really good system, uh, does, a, does a great job. But uh, you know, I fish a lot in Lake Erie and big water where you get in three, four foot waves or bigger and these motors on your bow just take such a pounding. Uh, I wanna do everything I can to prevent these from getting damaged. You know, if you lose your trolling motor, you're just done fishing. Uh, so I'm gonna add an aftermarket product. It's a TNH, it's the uh, Troll Tamer. And what this does, it connects to the base up here after you fold the motor back, and it allows you to actually lock the base of this down to the deck. Therefore, it cannot bounce up. It can't bounce up and uh, fly out and get hurt. So uh, this is a great product. Shouldn't take too long to install. I have to drill one hole in the base through the metal, and I've got three screws uh, to connect it to the deck. Uh, I think it's gonna go pretty easily. Let's find out how it goes. The Troll Tamer consists of a post that locks into a base. To release the post, you push back the lever on the base. The post is adjustable for height. A sturdy bolt and lock washer secure the post to your trolling motor bracket. The Troll Tamer comes in three adjustable sizes. To find the one you need, measure the distance from the trolling motor bracket in the store position and the deck of your boat. After you've bought the right size Troll Tamer, find a place on the deck of the boat that centers the top of the Troll Tamer's post in the center of the trolling motor bracket. Then drill a 7 16 hole through the top of the trolling motor bracket to attach the post. After drilling the hole, secure the Troll Tamer's post with its bolt and lock nut. To find the best place on the deck for the base, I attached it to the Troll Tamer's post. Then I dropped the bracket into the stowed position. Then I adjusted the length of the post so it would lock into the base when the base was flushed to the deck. The final step is to secure the base to the deck with stainless steel screws. got my troll tamer installed and this thing is rock solid you can't budget I uh, feel really good about running on rough water now I know this motor is going to be secure and it's not going to be damaged there's one more aftermarket product I want to add uh, and that's this g-force handle uh, I don't know about you but somehow I make a bad habit of breaking these cords that come with these trolling motors uh, I don't know what it is but Nothing's more frustrating than pulling your motor up during a tournament and it breaks and you have to stop and kind of redo it so you can keep on going. I'm seeing more and more of these uh, on the pros boats and the reason is instead of being a, a cord or a rope, it's a coated stainless steel cable. So this, this is a very tough cable, it's not going to break and uh, it's endorsed by Gerald Swindle so you know it's got to be good. So. Uh, we're going to figure out how to get this done, and I'm going to show you just what, uh, just what I do as I go. The G-Force handle comes with everything you need to install it, including two tiny Allen wrenches. And the first thing we need to do is just study how the cable that's already in there is connected. Because we're going to re remove it, and uh, the G-Force cable is going to have to go in the same place. So. I can see where it's connected in here. I'm gonna reach in there and see if I can uh, get a hold of that somehow so we can unhook it and, uh, and remove it. Okay, I got my needle nose. See if I can reach this. Okay. All I need to do is clip this off and it should feed right out of there. <clears throat> Okay, the old handle is gone. Okay, the next step is to take the, the new cable and put one of these little washers, slide it down until it gets to the end of the cable. There's a little 
steel ball there to prevent it from coming off. And it comes with two of these. It just says to use one, but I'm gonna use both of them. Now we need to slide the cable right through the same opening. I just pulled it out. And you have to route it right through and come out this hole, which looks like it's gonna be a challenge. I finally uh, was able to thread the cable through here. And what helped me do it was I, uh, I reached up in here with one of the Allen wrenches that came with the kit and I could hook it and guide it through the hole. So it took a little finagling, but I finally got it through there. Now we need to uh, attach the handle and we'll be done. <clears throat> First thing to do with the handle is to uh, thread it through here. Okay. And then we're going to, where's that little piece? <clears throat> this came with the cable. And I tried to put this on before. It's a really tight fit. You have to thread it through this. This keeper prevents the cable from sliding back through the handle. If you want to shorten the cable, do so with sharp wire cutters or a hacksaw before you attach the keeper. And then you insert these little, uh, these little Allen screws in each end. <clears throat> There's two of them. Here's the other one. Tighten the Allen screws on each end of the cable's keeper with one of the tiny Allen wrenches that come with the G-Force handle. <clears throat> All right, that's good and secure. Now you just pull this right down into the handle. Here's the keeper attached to the cable and pulled into the opening in the handle. The keeper holds the handle securely in place. And the final step is you attach this little cap right here. Just push it right in, it looks like. Man, that looks pretty slick, looks like, and there you are. You got a cable, you got a cable now that's not gonna break on you. You got a nice comfortable handle too, that's pretty slick. <clears throat> 